soon. I thought we had more people <laughs> talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Um, thanks, Mom, for coming and Ron. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, so I, I wrote this speech, and I, I, I talked about it with a few of my friends and my family members, and they said, well, I think you said the word anxiety a little too many times. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, like, well, you have no idea, you know, what we just did. So I probably didn't say it enough times. But good evening, everyone. Can everybody hear me? I'm honored to have been chosen up here to, uh, to stand up here to represent my class. And um, I wish to thank you so much, all of you, for traveling here tonight in rush hour traffic. I know it means a lot for us, for you all to be here this evening. And it means a lot to us that you've been here throughout this whole entire process for us. Um, thanks for doing the laundry and the cooking and doing the dishes and dealing with all of our anxiety and mood swings. <laughs> Thanks for listening to us go on and on about things that normal people should really not be bothering themselves with. Thanks for all the support. For me, at least, it has made this journey a lot more, a lot smoother. Now let me tell you all a little secret about myself. Uh, I've always been a bit of a neurotic hypochondriac. <laughs> And I'll tell you something else that you may have heard already from your people here, that a nursing school is very hard. Now I want you to think about this. I now have a whole new array of tools under my belt to better channel this hypochondria. Now when I wake up and I notice that my eyes are a little puffy, I know I have periorbital edema. And isn't my face a little puffy as well? My shoes were a little tight last night. I must have right-sided heart failure. <laughs> Getting a little dizzy as I get out of the bath? Ineffective cerebral perfusion. I must also have left-sided heart failure. A typical stomach ache is now a GI backup caused by portal hypertension. Or maybe it's cancer. Yes, it's definitely cancer. And on and on and on. The only semester I didn't have anything to worry about was the third semester, which was pediatrics and maternity. Because I will never have a difficult labor, and I've already had the chicken box. As the end of the program came to an end and the pressure mounted, uh, it became clear to me that I needed to find a better way to deal with all my anxiety, or else I would start developing stomach ulcers. So I got a burn. And now I have something entirely new and more importantly, tangible, to feel anxious about. I love my class. Um, it's a wonderful, talented group of people, and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to have gotten to know a little about all of them, and a little bit more about a few more. <laughs> One of the best things that Bunker Hill has to offer its students, besides an excellent nursing program, is a very diverse student population. Part of the education we received here, which to me was an unexpected bonus, is one of cultural awareness. Our nursing program stresses cultural competence, and the diversity of our classroom was the perfect venue for this kind of understanding. In our class alone, we have students from Haiti, Thailand, Russia, Nigeria, Colombia, Belarus, Korea, Vietnam, China, and Poland. Our classroom was also multi-generational allowing us all to experience the material from many points of view across the lifespan. My father thought I was going to be the oldest person in my class. <laughs> Not close. <laughs> in my first semester, uh, one of the things that Christine Johnson, Professor Johnson, taught me really caught my attention. That, and I knew right away that I had made the right decision to become a nurse. Nursing is not just about treating the symptoms of the body, but also treating the mind and the spirit. This holistic concept is something that very much resonates with me. It's one thing to ensure the right medications are administered to the right person in the right dosage at the right time, via the right route. I also think it's important to take a few moments to talk to our patients. 
asking simple questions about their life, may seem cliche and trivial, but it opens up channels of communication that go beyond words. And I believe that this is where the real healing starts to take place. We have all learned so much. Our heads right now are almost filled to the capacity of information. And I had to write the speech. Like, you guys got to rest. <laughs> One of the most important lessons I've learned in this program is simply this. And I really want you to think about this. Somehow, some way, someday, we're all going to die. So let us be helpful and pleasant to each other as we possibly can while we can. I know if I've made one person's day a little bit brighter, a little bit easier, then I've done my job. Thank you. I would like to invite Michelle Dugan to the podium.